morning. Um, my name is Sean Aurora, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the first director of the Candida Building for Innovative Sustainable Design. That is Georgia Tech's living building. Living. So if it's living, it's about five years old. Right? It's in preschool right now. It's the only student in class. Where's everybody else? So Georgia Tech's living building, it's a regenerative building. Simply put, it gives back to the environment and people more than it takes. Okay? It's net positive energy, meaning over the course of one year, it generates more on-site electricity than it consumes. It gives back more water to its ecosystem than it consumes. It began its life having diverted more waste from the landfill than it sent to the landfill. It began its life zero carbon impact. It's also a very healthy building. So in many ways, it encapsulates the majority of the UN SDGs. And it exists to be a change agent. We didn't want this building just for the accolades. We wanted it to be a change agent on our campus. We wanted it to be a change agent across the southeast. Where are the other living buildings? So I'll answer that question by asking you all a question. How many of you have paid for a home to be constructed, a new home? You don't have to answer by raising your hands. Just say, have you ever seen a new home being constructed? Have you ever paid for a new home to be constructed? Okay. Did you see a dumpster in front of the new home? And inside the dumpster was there scrap pieces of wood, drywall, caulk, tile. Yes, guarantee there were. Did you pay for the garbage? Yes, you did. Then did you pay your general contractor money to haul your money off to the landfill? Yes, you did. Did you pay your general contractor more money after you paid the general contractor money to haul your money to the landfill, to dump it into the landfill? Yes, you did. Now, is that rational market behavior? Some of you are shaking your head no. It is absolutely, yes, unequivocally, rational market behavior. Because it is cheaper to throw things away than to do what we did, which is divert more waste from the landfill than we sent to the landfill. And so long as, so long as it is cheaper to throw things away, so long as it is cheaper to pollute, dare I say, so long as we subsidize pollution, we will never have living buildings to scale. You just can't compete. You can't compete against free. You can't compete against cheap. So it is an unfair metric by which we judge a living building and a conventional building. The number of times I've asked, well, what is the monetary return on investment? Actually, they say, what is the return on investment? And I say, well, the return on investment is immediate. It's day one. We're Georgia Tech. We lead. This is an exemplar of what we should be doing. The return on investment is immediate. Well, you know what I mean. I'm like, yeah, I know what you mean. You mean money. Well, it's hard to compete against the alternative, which is subsidized pollution. All right, so let's, let's, let me ask another question to the group. Uh, and this time I am going to ask for you to participate. Raise your hand if you think the price of water is going down in the future. Raise it high. Sorry, the light is in my... My friends, can you turn around? How, sir, how many hands are up? No hands. Raise your hand if you think the price of electricity is going down in the future. All right. There's always a few, and we can talk about why, especially at Georgia Tech, but the vast majority, I've asked this question to thousands of people, the vast majority of people are going to say no. And I can guarantee you that the price of electricity is going up in Georgia because we know it's going up. So if the price of electricity is going up, and everybody, no, not a single person has ever raised their hand about the price of water going down, why wouldn't we do what we did? Why is every building not thinking of hyper energy efficiency and hyper water efficiency as utility insurance. And that gets to the second reason why the Candido building is the only student in class. 
is because we have a profound mismatch of funding. There's one group of people who are rewarded and one pot of money that only thinks of first cost. And there's a second group of people who are rewarded and a second pot of money that thinks of life cycle cost. And the two shall never talk. The two shall actually be at odds with each other. Whether it's on this campus or the government or whatever else, the two are basically at odds. So one, one side is the private sector. If there's one thing COVID has taught us is that the private sector can dump property. They'll just dump it. They'll break a lease. They'll declare bankruptcy. They'll abandon their plans. There's a particular group of building owners that can't dump property, like Georgia Tech. We can't just dump property. So we should be thinking long term, and we are. We have learned from our living building. Uh, you heard Dan Nemec, my colleague, yesterday speaking about all the ways that Georgia Tech is incorporating uh, sustainability into its built environment. This building will have an 80 kilowatt solar uh, system installed by the end of the year or early next year. When you walk outside, I want you to take uh, I want to pay attention to the pavers, they're pervious. And those ditches that you see, those are bioswales. We are helping manage rainfall on site so that it's not a uh, burden to downstream communities. It's also happening in bits and pieces around Atlanta. The Amana Academy came to the Candida building, was so inspired by what we've done that they installed a bioswale in their building. Uh, Temple Sinai, which is a synagogue, was so inspired when they came to the Candida building that they instituted a host of sustainability uh, features on their building, including a 100 kilowatt solar canopy that went live in January. And what's really exciting is the Roswell Community Mosque, they are embarking on a fully certified living mosque. It will be the first house of worship in the world that's fully certified living building. And I would be remiss to not mention the New York Climate Exchange. The New York Climate Exchange is an endeavor that Georgia Tech is leading and is part of in uh, Governor's Island in New York, where we, it's like taking everything that we've learned here with the Candida building and applying it across an entire island. So where's the rest of the class? Well, they're coming. They're coming, and, and, but it's hard. And the reason it is hard is because, like I said, primarily it is very difficult to compete with cheap, free pollution, subsidized pollution. And there's a profound mismatch in how it is that we fund buildings with one pot of money that's designed for the initial construction cost and another pot of money that's allocated for operations. The last thing I will say is where's the rest of the class? They are coming to Atlanta. The Living Future 24 conference will be here in Atlanta. So if you want to get a 25% discount code for the conference, which is happening this summer, come see me, and I'll, I'll send you the discount code. Thank you very much.